Hey, this is YBR with my first video back in well over a month, so I wanted to do something a little bit special for this video. So we're going to build a LEGO Nintendo Entertainment System. And I really want to say NES, but everywhere on the box it says Nintendo Entertainment System, TM. So I had to say it in full at least once, but from now on, don't expect me to say it in full, it's just NES. Now this is a 2,646 piece kit, and the box is quite a bit bigger than I expected. If we compare it to an NES Mini, you can see it's many, many, many long of those and many, many, many wide of those. If we compare it to a regular NES, it's about two NESs wide by two NESs long. And even the height is similar to an NES, it's just a little bit taller. So you can conveniently use an original NES as a measurement for the size of the box. Now, let's go ahead and do a hyperspeed unboxing of this thing. And by hyperspeed, I mean we do a jump, then we have another box, which we can also dump as well. Now, out of this whole pile of things, the only important thing is this. This is the manual. All of this, that's for later. This is for now. And we actually have two manuals inside of this. The first one shows you how to make the NES, and then the second one shows you how to make the TV. We also have some stickers as well. And I know when you pull these stickers out, you're going to be really tempted to take them and slap them on your forehead because I am tempted to do that. But I know I shouldn't because I'm 99% certain this sticker goes on an NES cartridge we're going to make and this sticker is going to go on the back of the TV we make. It's also a good chance to kind of get an idea of how big this is going to be because this is how big a real cartridge is and how big the sticker on that is compared to the sticker it gives us. So it's a good bit smaller than the actual console, even though the box is so massive. So let's go ahead and get started with the NES. But before we can build, we must read Nintendo Entertainment System. And then it actually says NES here. And I double checked on the box. Nowhere on the box does it say NES, but it says NES right there. I am so happy about that. So the NES launched in the US in 1985. It has set the foundation of the current video game industry in the West and introduced millions of players to the compelling worlds of Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and more. Now held in high esteem by gamers all over the world, it's still the control deck that puts you in control of incredible fun. Lancy, Ox, Esten, Unis, and 1985, La Console, Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, Opera. Oh, wait a minute, you can't fool me. That's not in English. I'm smarter than that. So we also have some imagery and stuff here. And man, these dudes are having a ball. I hope I'm having that much fun when I'm building it. Although I don't think I'll have that much fun after I build it. Like, it's all built up and they're having that much fun. How are they doing that? And over on the right, it says, when we set out to create this classic TV and console combo, we wanted to do more than just build models that looked the part. We also wanted them to be packed with features and functions from the originals. That's why small but authentic details such as input-output slots, antenna and controls are there, and why you can place a game pack in the console, change channels on the TV, and watch a moving image. Can't fool me again with that other language stuff. And this is the last page of reading, I promise. Before I read though, got some cool little diagrams here, and another diagram about putting the game cartridge in. In the early 1980s, the team at Nintendo set an ambitious goal, to develop a new cartridge-based video game console that would deliver experiences that were then available only on powerful arcade counterparts. The NES would go on to not only offer the thrill of arcade games in the home, but to usher in entirely new types of experiences. It was LEGO designers Pablo Gonzalez and Leon Leon, why are your name so weird? It's got like a P and a J? Mr. Berg. He's just going to be Mr. Berg. Now, there's another person. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but they're not in the picture over here. So obviously they weren't that important. I kind of feel bad for them. Like, why aren't they in the picture, man? But they took up the challenge of creating Lego replicas of both the NES and a retro-styled 1980s TV. Luckily, the size of a number of existing Lego elements matched closely with key visual details on the original console and controller allowing the designers to construct models that were as close to true to scale as possible. The TV, while not one-to-one, -one, actually matches the instructional drawings in the original booklet that came with the NES when it launched. That's one thing I wish I had. I really wish I had some of the original boxes and documentation for the NES. Oddly enough, I have the original stuff for the 3DOs I have, but not the NES, which seems weird because, like, how many 3DO boxes are out there compared to how many NES boxes are out there, right? Anyways, 
How successful were the LEGO designers? Simply pick up the controller and experience how your muscle memory kicks in. All the controls and buttons are exactly where your thumb remembers them to be. So let's see if that's true. Eventually, this is gonna make a controller, right? So do I have muscle memory here? No, it, it doesn't feel like a controller at all. I don't know. I don't know if they did it, but they're supposed to, man. So anyways, here's one final look at the diagrams and the pictures and stuff here. One final look there. If you want to look closer, pause now. And then also pause now. Otherwise, we are moving on to the very first step. And we are going to build the NES controller and the cartridge. Now, I really think LEGO needs to have like hard mode instructions where this is all they say. You're going to build this. Here's the instructions. Instead, it's you're going to build this. To build this, you need to build that. To build that, you're going to do this. It's like, this makes this, which makes that. So many steps. So we need to get the big flat piece and number one. Big flat piece. Number one, which has been moved into a Ziploc. That way, I won't accidentally push a piece off of the table and it gets lost forever. Now, I just push the whole Ziploc off the table and I lose all the pieces all at once. It saves me tons of time. So let's go ahead and actually get started with building. Now, I tried a few different camera angles and stuff for this. And I decided the way I like to do it the most is having the instructions on camera. So that way, when I make a mistake, all of you will see it. And all of you get to be like, why VR? You put that in the wrong spot. Do you even know what a Lego is? I bet you say Legos. Oh, I will say Legos. Don't you doubt me. I will say Legos many, many times. Now, some of you guys might remember a video I made in the past where I've tried to build a Lego Bugatti. And that video worked great for just the first part. The problem was, in that 20 minutes for the first video, I said everything I knew about Bugatti, and then I had nothing to talk about for the future parts, so that's why the future parts for that video were scrapped. This one, however, we can talk about video games, and I have a lot of experience with video games, because I've been playing video games ever since I was like six or seven, and I've been driving Bugattis since never. So I figured for this whole video series, what I can kind of do is just Go over my history of video games, because my very first video game console was an NES, which sounds kind of strange when you think about it, because I didn't play my first video game until like 2000 or 2001, and by that time, the GameCube was coming out sooner, it might have already been out in fact, yet I'm over there starting with the NES. The reason for that is quite simple. That's what my family could afford, so that's what I played on. And in a way, I'm actually really thankful for that because I feel like I'm able to enjoy video games from just about any video game console out there. The only ones I really can't get into are the ones that came before the NES. So that would mean consoles like the Atari 2600 where sometimes your character is literally just one big fat pixel. Those ones I really can't get into, but there are some consoles from before the NES that I can enjoy like the Atari 5200 or even the Vectrix. Both of those ones have graphics that look good enough to me where they don't feel like a major downgrade from the NES games that I grew up with. And I always kind of wonder, if I started with the GameCube and it's really nice 3D graphics, would I feel the same way where games from before that I just really can't get into that well? Like maybe I'd only be able to enjoy some of the Nintendo 64 games, but all these great classic 2D games on the SNES and the NES, I just wouldn't be able to enjoy? I don't know. So for all you guys out there who started on a video game console, and then you look back at the consoles that came before that, that you never really got to experience initially, are you able to enjoy those still? Or does it just feel too old? And we can actually see my very first official mistake. See, this piece was supposed to be attached earlier, and I just didn't, because it's showing on the picture. Yeah, it's already there. So if we look back a little bit, we probably can see, yeah, you were supposed to attach that. Yep, right there. Hey, you're supposed to attach that, and I didn't. So there we go. We are 10 steps in, and we've already made a mistake. Thankfully, it's a very easy one to fix. Well, actually, we were like five steps in when that mistake actually happened, huh? Oh, that's even worse. But as I was saying, can you enjoy video game consoles from before your first one? Or do they just feel too primitive for you to really enjoy? I would really be interested in knowing that. So anyways, as I said, my very first console was the NES. And there are two games in particular that I remember playing as a child. The first one is a game everybody knows and loves. That is the original Legend of Zelda game. 
The second one is a game that isn't exactly known in love. It is the Back to the Future game on the NES. Why those two games? I could not tell you. I have absolutely no clue how it became those two games. I'm assuming what happened was is when my parents bought the NES, it came with a stack of games from the person who had it before me, and they probably had like a dozen games or so, and then maybe my parents removed like five of them because they were too violent for me at that time, and then maybe three of them I just forgot in time. But those two games in particular really stand out to me. Now the funny thing is, is both of those games, I only remember the very first level because I'm sitting over there like a big fat child going, huh, huh, Zelda has a sword, and then I'm confused, like why won't the sword go pow, pow anymore? It's just a stabby. I didn't understand the thing. I didn't know why the sword sometimes shot and sometimes it didn't. I didn't know that was Link and not Zelda. Like there's so much about it that I had no idea what was going on. I just ran in circles, tried to go pow, pow at every enemy and tried to ride the boat. All right, since this thing keeps growing, I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera setup around a little bit to make things fit just a little bit nicer. There we go. One cool thing about this change is everything is zoomed in just a tiny bit more, so everything should be just a tiny bit more clear. One bad thing is now you can only see one page at a time. Before, you could see both of the pages that I see. Now, you just see this page, so I gotta remember after every single page to flip the book, otherwise you'll just miss a step completely. And I'm gonna tell you now, I probably will forget eventually, and when that happens, I apologize in advance. Also, we're gonna spend a lot of time flipping pages probably, because over here, we just have one piece to connect, and we're done. Already time to flip pages. This flip is actually pretty nice and fast, isn't it? Like, it's just one smooth, easy motion. The next flip is where things can get a little bit annoying, because on this one, it's like three motions. First, you unfold the pages. Then, you flip the page. Then, yeah, move it into position. Okay, obviously it's not gonna actually take that long because I overdramatized it, but you get the idea. It does take a second longer every time we do a page. Now going back to Zelda, once in a great while, I would somehow just manage to fall into the first dungeon and most of the time just die there. I think the farthest I ever got was to the boss for the very first dungeon. And that to me was like the end of the game. If I could beat him, I would win the game. That's what it was in my head because I could never beat that very first boss in the game. And I really remember once I got the boomerang, I would feel invincible. I didn't even really know how to consistently get the boomerang, but eventually I would somehow get it and I'd be like, wah, 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 boomerang on everybody. Now for Back to the Future, looking back on that, I have no idea how that game really managed to keep my attention so well. I guess as just a child, I didn't know any better. But the funny thing was is that game had multiple levels that actually had variety to them. Me being a child, I was really bad at video games. I never got past the very first intro level. That's the one where it's just like I, that song is embedded into my brain for the rest of my life. And it probably took me like 10 years to realize there's more than just that one level to the game. Because it's one of those games that I really never went back to ever. With Zelda, that's actually a game I went back to when I was probably like 13 or so. And I actually got a decent bit through the game. But that Back to the Future game, it never really got to me that there was more to the game until like 10 years later when I was playing some NES games on my channel. Yeah, way back then in like 2010, 2011, every now and then I would throw in a video for an NES game. But I was playing through some of them and I ended up picking up Back to the Future and I realized, whoa, there's more than just that first level. And you can actually find a video from way back then where I played through the whole game. There's no commentary on it or anything, but I played through the entire game. It's like a half hour long video. I think there's a couple of times where I failed, but overall I got pretty good at that game. And to this day, I bet I could probably whoop through it in under an hour, no problem. Now there are three other games that I remember, but the memories for them are more vague. And I'll tell you what games they actually are in the next video. But for now, I'll give you guys a hint so you could try to guess what those three games are. Flying Turtle Ghosts. Now if you're able to guess just one game out of that, that's pretty good. Two games, that's pretty impressive. All three of them? That's just amazing. 
So we're going to be ending this video in a second because this is the very last step we have until we have completed the first bag. There's like 20 bags, so next video we'll probably do multiple bags. But I was trying a lot of different things with editing on this one, so I'd also love feedback on this. I'm asking for a lot of comments, aren't I? Oh well, I'm sure you guys have a lot to say because I haven't made videos in so long. So anyways, until next time, this is YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I'll know. I can tell by the number of bricks that I lose, so do the right oh, yeah. thing, and I'll see you next time.